Uh, this is um, uh, really the epitome of what we've been working on for so many years in North Carolina related to digital connectivity and making sure that our classrooms and our schools are connected across the state of North Carolina. And so today we're here obviously because we're celebrating uh, Digital Technology Day and uh, this is a, uh, a big day to display some of the great work that's been going on in not just in North Carolina but right here uh, in Holly Springs as well at Oakview and uh, I, there it probably was about four years ago or so that uh, we were talking about the digital learning plan and putting together a new digital learning plan for the state of North Carolina and at that time uh, made this big statement said North Carolina I believe North Carolina will be the first state in the nation to have every single classroom connected to high-speed broadband and from there, we ended up uh, working with the General Assembly and going to Washington, D.C. We, at that time, we had about $12 million a year going into digital technology for classroom connectivity uh, for the state of North Carolina. And then we ended up increasing that to about $19 million a year. And then we went to the federal government and met with the federal communications uh, group and said to the FCC chairman, we said, you know what, we believe that North Carolina can be your bright shining star in the United States. And we believe we can be the first state in the nation to have every classroom connected to high-speed broadband. And they said, you know what, we agree. They said, you are probably farther along than anybody else in the country. Let's go and make this happen. And so we partnered with the federal government and the FCC to change their E-rate rules and to rewrite that and how they fund uh, rural communities, especially in North Carolina, around the country. And uh, they ended up partnering with us and giving us over $65 million a year. So we have over $100 million a year now going into digital co connectivity uh, in North Carolina. And we will be, by the end of this next year, we'll be the first state in the nation to have every single classroom connected. And then you add on to that the device component of that. And Oakview's a, a bring your own device uh, model. And I think what you're going to see is the ability for parents to get engaged in their students' education at a new level because of the bring your own device model in schools. Uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all world for, for education, and it's not a one-size-fits-all world for technology especially. And different families have their ways of communicating and using technology, and different students are going to have their ways that they prefer to do it. And that's okay, because the world is really getting big enough to allow that to happen. And the content and curriculum and the connectivity of that content and curriculum over multiple uh, platforms is allowing that to happen now. And so we really, in a lot of ways, have this uh, a perfect storm, if you will, in a good way, of education, all the things that are coming together with the low cost of uh, broadband technology being delivered, uh, storage capacity increasing at an at a exponential rate with the cost of that being driven down, the cost of devices being driven down, and then the uh, really just this massive content delivery that's coming into education now in the digital world. And so... Uh, we have, for the first time, I believe in the history of the world, this opportunity mm -hmm. to do what you're doing here. <laughs> you're, you're doing it to, to be able to customize content and curriculum to, to every single student, to build, uh, as uh, we just came from one teacher's classroom in a, in a kindergarten class where the teacher is actually building portfolios for every single student individually. And the parents can go out and they can see that work uh, on a daily basis and they can get engaged in the students working. And she happened to have 100% participation from parents in her classroom, and that's incredible. That's what we want. If we want to really turn education upside down and change it, we're going to have to have parental involvement to do that. Parents are going to have to take on their responsibility and be engaged in their students' education. So we're seeing that play out right here in Holly Springs. So I want to just say congratulations to you. And this is really a perfect model for the state of North Carolina. And this is going to happen in different ways all over our state in the, in the coming years. So I think we will not only, we're going to be the first state to have every classroom connected. I believe we'll be the first state to have one-to-one -one devices in the hands of all our students. And I also believe we'll be the first state uh, in the country even though we're the second largest rural state uh, in America, I believe we'll be the first state in the country to have uh, the last mile connected to homes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on that now. We're working on uh, policy to be able to do that. We're working on some public-private partnership arrangements to be able to do that in our communities. And, and uh, you're going to be able to see opportunities for uh, community revitalization in places that haven't had that opportunity. You're going to be able to see job growth happening. You're going to be seeing telehealth pop up in these communities and it all starts right here with education. I mean this is really the heart of all of it and this is where it all starts so uh, with that I'll open up to questions but thank you all for uh, this day and for the tour. Thank you. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit more about the importance of 
the last mile, as you were talking about, you know, in, in some areas, students may be able to activate a device or use internet access in school, but mm -hmm. may not have that same opportunity to um, do their work at home. So, Well, I think we have the ability for students to do their work at home. I mean, I think we've, you know, we've bridged that gap a little bit by being able to, you know, teachers can upload content to students' devices and those students can take that home and do their work. They may not have full access like a lot of students do to all the content that's available out there. So there is still a gap, but it's not, the gap's not as large as it was. But I think when it comes to parental involvement, I think that's where you really see the connection happening is when parents can have this real-time, one-to-one engagement with teachers with what's going on in the classroom, with what's going on with their students. I think that's where you really see the, the, the leap for as far as content goes and how is my student doing in the classroom. But you know, related to what the last mile does to a community, I mean, obviously we're connected to the world now, but we have places in North Carolina that uh, still have dial-up connections or no con connectivity at all because we're so rural. 85% uh, of our state is still rural. So, uh, just like you know, we've talked about in the 40s and 50s and 60s with building our highway infrastructures and, and, and having this connectivity through roadways and railways and transportation, this is just a different infrastructure component for a state. It's a new way of looking at infrastructure. It's a way I believe that even government should start to facilitate to make sure all of its uh, citizens are connected in the way that we said we needed to be connected with, uh, with roadways as well. Uh, so uh, you talk about a, a, a person that may live in a remote rural part of North Carolina that has to drive an hour to get to a hospital. Uh, with telehealth, they can log on, they can see their doctor face to face. Their doctor may say, you don't need to come in at all. You know, you hold up your phone to your heart. I can do an EKG on you right now. You know, put that blood pressure cuff on and we can, we can take your blood pressure. We'll just prescribe you a medication. You can order that online and have it shipped to your house. You, you don't have those barriers anymore, but you think obviously you know that what that does to the job market and people being able to move to small communities and be connected to the world and they can live anywhere today they don't have to live in a major metropolitan area so job growth is uh, spurred through that transportation needs are diminished because of that uh, you know it, it goes on and on and on yeah a good question anybody else you want to add anything does anybody want to talk a little bit about what's going on here uh, well, I would just step up here. Certainly, I I would just like to say that the BYOD. I wanted to to address that uh, in terms of the work that I had that a team had done at a previous school. Uh, we were able to begin that in our first year at Oakview, and one of the primary components is building that culture, that understanding of bringing your own device. And when you're able to bring your device and access the world, um, because we may not be able to um, do that with a one-to-one -one in the beginning stages, as I say, um, I think, Lieutenant Governor, you mentioned that that would be our goal, certainly at, at some point, but there, we're having devices and students have access to things that they can bring to the school, but the infrastructure of how to use it, how to access it, um, how um, it is important that we um, build a knowledge of blended learning and the face-to-face, -face, the relationship that has to be established prior to using the device. Um, because just putting uh, a child and saying, research or go do this, um, is not going to be able to give them the depth of knowledge or the understanding that they may need in order to answer creatively or even build a collaborative conversation around an essential question or solving a problem, you want to be able to have them uh, develop those communication skills. That has to be done with interpersonal um, skills. So it's a balance of creating the culture, the understanding of the staff as to how to be a part of that environment prior to rolling it out. And so we have done that throughout this year uh, through working with professional development with our teachers, having parent education nights where parents come in and are a part of that um, um, evening to understand how they can support their children. So that I want to I really feel that uh, relationship is such a critical yeah. component um, along those lines as well. One other piece that it, it, it also lends itself to students accessing technology in a way that they're using it as a productivity tool. It's not using it to just access information, but they're creating a final product. Um, they're using it to display their knowledge, and that is so important 
And through that, our teachers have been, we have been using uh, Google, Google certification training. And so many of our teachers are Google level one certified. And through that certification process, they're able to use Google Classroom and a lot of tools to help build that um, communication, uh, as you mentioned, 100% with home, with parents involved, building student portfolios so that they can see their progress from pre-K through fifth grade and we're looking at ways we can develop that through the gateways of fifth grade into sixth grade middle school on to high school and looking at that going on to a higher uh, higher ed institution as well so that they can see the portfolio of their learning through all the years so the opportunities are endless we never arrive we're always on the journey and I have to remind myself teachers and students that this is a lifelong journey and we're all learners along the process yeah, I was just um also, just kind of reminded as we're sitting here in the media center, surrounded by books, right? That uh, technology is just a tool. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important to remember that it is just a tool. It's not the end all, be all of anything you mentioned. Correct. The relationship component. You know, obviously having great teachers in the classroom, having great principals in our schools, having, you know, having the facilities to do the types of things that you can do. But technology is a tool, and I, I like to remind folks that we didn't worship the pencil, right? Don't worship <laughs> the computer. Don't worship the the iPhone. Don't worship a, a, an Apple Watch. We don't worship these things because they're tools to be delivered to deliver content uh, to a student. And these books that are behind us are every bit as valuable as that computer. So a student be able to pick up a book and be able to read a book and have get the desire to love to learn and to love to read, you still do it in places like this too. So, uh, But what you're doing here really is amazing. Thank you, sir. And uh, this is just a, a beautiful example in North Carolina of uh, how we are changing the face of education. And so uh, again, thank you for your time. And. Um, we look forward to the remainder of the tour. Excellent. Good deal. Thank you.